Welcome to the Plant Trainers Podcast, where we're helping people improve their quality of life through nutrition and fitness. And now, your hosts, nutrition and wellness coaches, international speakers, Adam and Shoshana Chaim. Hey, I'm Adam Chaim. And I'm Shoshana Chaim, and we are Propelled, Propelled by, by Plants. Plants. We bring to you episode 459, Doing What You Love in the New Year. In this episode of the Plant Trainers Podcast, we talk about doing the things that you love and that you should be doing in the new year. If anything's clear today, it is just that we simply need more time to do the things that are filling our cup and we need to leave other things behind. Understanding your basic needs and real values is really a must and showing up for yourself to be who you're meant to be is really key as well. So we take you through some of the tried and tested exercises and we share a little bit about what we love to do and what we're leaving behind. For those of you new here, I'm Adam Chaim and I am a health and nutrition and fitness coach and I am a two-time Ironman triathlete. I also coach volleyball to high school teams, boys and girls, and I'm a health and physical educator always looking to help you improve your quality of life. For those of you who are new here, I'm Shoshana Chaim, and I'm a health expert, redox educator, author, speaker, and we've been doing this podcast for eight years wow. running. Yeah, now I'm a leader in the redox education field. I'm teaching other health practitioners and individuals how to address healing in the body beyond nutrition, deep within the cell and the mitochondria. We teach the body to communicate and heal on its own by helping it with its own intercellular fluid. And I teach those clients and help Health practitioners to build businesses through the joy of healing others. And I'm looking for five new people to train by the end of January. So if you're interested in some of that, then email us at info at planttrainers.com for more information. Enjoy the show. Hey everyone. Now it's more important than ever to stay close and connected to us as we're going to be making some changes here at Plant Trainers. So please head over to planttrainers.com and get our plant-based comfort foods recipe book for free. That's a $14.99 value just by signing up for our newsletter so that you can know what changes are because we want to make sure that we stay in touch. And now for a moment of gratitude. I'm extremely grateful for the whole year altogether. We had ups, we had downs, but through it all, there were lots of lessons. And I think that's the most important thing, despite what it is you're going through. If you could find a lesson in it, then you've won that situation. I'm grateful for the holiday season. Merry Christmas to those who of you who celebrate and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa and all the other holidays. Hope you enjoyed them and enjoyed being with family just like I'm grateful for and get ready for the new year. So happy new year. It's coming up pretty soon. Hey everybody, you have Adam and I here today. No guest, no guest to ask them how they became plant-based and what changed and all of those amazing good things. But we did want to talk a little bit about leaving things behind that aren't serving you anymore and making sure you're doing more of the things that you love as you come into this new year. And I think we're going to keep it pretty short because it's the holiday season. Happy holidays to everybody. It's a new year. Happy new year to everybody. And hopefully you'll gain something out of this that will be very useful for you moving into the new year. So over the last little while, I think that somehow people feel like they have less time. But I also think that that's because they are starting to do more of the things that they love. They're starting to spend time with the people that they like more. They're starting to exercise more, um, play musical instruments. They're starting to really enjoy themselves. But then you you seem to get really stressed and overwhelmed by trying to make all the things happen. Yeah, and we all have the same amount of time in every day. We've talked about this so many times. (laughs) But it's really how you use those minutes in your day and how you use them to your benefit, to the value of getting what you want out of your life and your day. And I think people will have better quality of life. They'll have more longevity and there'll be less feelings of negativity and less negative self-talk when you're not doing the things that you're like, oh, no, I'm doing it. I mean, do you have to take out the trash every week? Yeah. Do you enjoy doing that? No, but there's a difference between doing that and you know, being stuck in, and and it's a hard thing because being stuck in the same job that you've been in for 30 years, that really makes you miserable. 
but it's also your livelihood. Right. So there's a lot of things that we have to do in our lives and there's no, it's not negotiable. There's no option, but it's really important to find things that you love to do that could add more value to your life. So why do we need to find things that we love to do? Why is that so important? Well, I think that it's everybody's overall mental health. And I think that everybody has dealt with more stress in the last couple of years. And I think that we've just all come to the realization that life is too short and people Mm. are going to be wasting their life away. And then they're going to be even it's, it's going to be that spiral of mental health. So what are some of the things that you love and value and that are important to you? Being with the family, being with the kids, being present, being with you, being available, making time for that. I know a lot of people find that, you know, they work all day, they come home, they go to sleep, they do it again. For me, it's important to be home when the kids come home from school. And I'm lucky that, yeah, my job kind of lets me do that. But there are days where it doesn't happen. So you got to make the extra effort to communicate with family members. That's important to me. Yeah. So family is definitely important to me too. I have cut back on the nights that I work to be able to spend more time with the kids. But I really do value my own personal health. And I've been doing a lot in terms of um, meditation. I've been doing some sound therapy. I've rejoined the gym. So I've been doing different things. Again, um, I play my catch ball, right? Physical activity and mental strength is important to me, especially because of my history and where I've been before in terms of mental health, in terms of self-talk and all of that. It I'm really feeling as if I need to take care of myself now in this time. Well, I think people need to remember that without our health, we have nothing. And health should be our number one priority. But a lot of people take it for granted and just kind of go with the flow and don't really pay attention to their quality of health. And there are things that they could be doing that people could do to improve it. Obviously, what food goes into your body? Are you thinking about how you're consuming it? What's your quality of sleep like? Are you exercising? Are, what are your relationships like? like? These are all things that we've talked about many times on the shows in the past. But you said more than one thing. Uh, you asked me one thing and I said family. And then you went on to say all these other things. Well, no, that... the other thing that I said was one thing also. I let you say a thing. <laughs> you said a lot of things. No, well, you said a lot of things having to do with family. Family. And I said a lot of things having to do with my own personal health. Okay, Right. But everything leads into your health. So, I mean, for me, I would also find exercise to be important. And when I don't do it, it, it changes my mood, right? Yes. We know that. Yes. We know yeah. that. <laughs> I'm nodding yes to the people on YouTube. And and the same and the same for me. I mean, family's important to me too. I wasn't going right. to go and no, no. Yeah. repeat anything. So is there something besides family and health that's important to you too? There's like a lot what, of what Like what would you put next into or... What, like for me, my work is really important and it's because I feel as if I, I, I feel better when I know that I'm contributing to society and I feel better when I know that I'm a woman that could stand, stand on two feet and that I could support myself. And that's important. Um, not that I want to support myself, but it's important for me to know that I have the skills and tools to do that and set an example for both my children, both male and female, that they can do what they want, that they can make a life change and a career change at any time, and that they can make whatever they want happen and to be to have the means that they that they can live on as well. So for me, that's something that I value a lot too, which, is part of the reason why I tend to work a lot. You do work a lot, but we all work a lot. Everybody does. I mean, for me, yes, I teach, I coach. I think coaching students and and, and teenagers in, in the sport of volleyball is something that I love to do. I help people with their nutrition, and I think I love seeing the change and people making the adaptations or... Being successful, obviously, is fun to see, and it's very challenging when people are not finding that success. So helping them find another gear to get to that success level is something that I like to do, too. 
We're just gonna take a little break here because I want to share with you that growth is something that happens for everyone and every business. And we've been going through a lot of personal and professional growth here at Plant Trainers, and we wanna stay connected with you. That's why we're giving away our plant-based comfort food ebook that's worth $14.99 for free at our website at planttrainers.com or by clicking the link in the show notes. Click on that, get on our newsletter because we're gonna be making some serious changes and you need to be aware of what's going on. We look forward to connecting with you there. And now back to the show. So what I want to take everybody through now is a little bit of an exercise. We're not necessarily going to answer the questions here with you, but you can access these questions by going to planttrainers.com and checking out the show notes. Slash 459. Slash 459. So planttrainers.com slash 459. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. 459 episodes. Wow. All right. So here's what you need. You need quiet space or loud space, whatever, whatever floats your boat. You need some paper or a computer. You just need to reflect on these questions or you don't need to, but you can reflect. It's a good practice. It's a good exercise and it will likely help you shift towards what you really want to get out of in 2023. And some of these things are what I teach in my accountability group that I do in a large networking group for women. And if you're interested in more about what I do in that accountability group, definitely reach out. All right. Ready? What are the three best things about 2022? So I want you to start to think about those. And the reason is it's going to help you pull out some of the things that may be important to you, or maybe they were bucket list and they're no longer important to you anymore. Maybe you want to move on, right? Maybe you ran your 10K and 10Ks are not what you want to do anymore. Now you want to go into Ironman, right? So where are you going to want to focus your time? But we'll talk about that after. What were the three most challenging moments? And that could be personal. That could be in business, that could be in relationships. It can mean a lot of different things. What what challenged you in 2022 that's going to help push you to the next level? And maybe you have to make adjustments to be able to work through those challenges. So what were they and how can you overcome them when they face you in the future? And then what are you most grateful for? And those areas of gratefulness and gratitude might come out of the three best things about 2022. It could also come out of the three most challenging things in 2022 or be completely different on its own. And as you know, we practice that regularly here on the Plant Trainers podcast. We usually start with a moment of gratitude and we do it daily also in the house. So it's an important practice to get into and thinking of it as a big picture, what we were grateful for the year, but also doing it on a smaller scale every single day. All right. So what are three areas of of your life that you wish were improved? Wish? Do you wish were improved? Or so want you, to improve? Well, do you wish you had more? Like, what are you wishing for? Do you wish you had more time? Like genie wish? For family? Kind of, kind of genie. Yeah, well, it could be genie realistic, wish. Realistic, though? Re- realistic sure. Genie realistic genie wish. Re- realistic genie wish. So, right? So it could be more time for your family. It could be more time to exercise. Um, you may wish that you were retired. And then you kind of got to reflect on why do you wish that, mm-hmm. right? And where are you in your life that you're mm-hmm. wishing that? Yeah. What do you truly value most? And Adam and I talked about some of our values from before. I think the next one would be thinking about your goals and perhaps setting one to three goals. You don't need more than that. You could set some big goals and then some smaller goals, but I call those smaller goals action steps that you're going to use to get to your bigger goals. So why don't, maybe we can give them some examples of that. So like, for example, we talked about valuing our family. So one of my goals might be to really be present with my family when I'm with my family and be able to put my phone away, if not all the time, but for for a period of time and not check on it. And that's something that would be a goal for me there. Yeah. If you have health goals, maybe like just something simple, like just adding more greens to your diet every day. Or exercising three times a week if you're doing less than that. Or it might be you want to lose some weight and be specific with what you're trying to lose. Right. Or you might want to have a life goal. Maybe you want to take on a new hobby. Um, Maybe you want to, I don't know, maybe I'm going back to Ironman. Maybe you want to do an Ironman. Maybe you want to publish a book. Maybe you just want to walk around the block every day. Like that could be the goal. It doesn't have to be something as big as a 10K or an Ironman, right? No, but in terms of life goals also, like maybe you want to learn a new skill. Like you want to learn how to knit or maybe, maybe you want to start a side business where you're creating, 
you know, a hundred, two hundred, a thousand, two thousand extra dollars a month, like I teach people to do. There's different things that you can do in terms of life goals. So try to think about three goals that you want to achieve. And obviously you're going to have to press pause as you're going through this or go back Mm. to the show notes and check it out. So once all of that is done, you might want to make a list of all the things that you do, or you might want to make a list of all the things that are taking up the most time and the least amount of time. When you say make a list of everything that you do, what, mm-hmm. what do you mean by that? Like, well, I mean, like you're for, talking about a like a day by day. What are the regular things that you do on a weekly basis or a monthly basis? What are the things that are getting done? So, are you watching Netflix? Are you watching TV? Are you watching sports on TV? Um, and what, for how much time you want to, you want people to put you, that you down? You could, you could actually that might help. Are you volunteering? And what kind of places are you volunteering at? Are you, do you have a day job and do you have side side hustles? Or are you an entrepreneur and are you running multiple businesses right now? And how much time are you dedicating to them? And how profitable are they being? And how much do they fill your cup? Because I'll, I'll share a story. When we started Plant Trainers, I was running a kids yoga business. Um, So I was going out and I was actually teaching kids yoga myself. I was also training other people to go and teach the kids yoga classes. I was running the health business. We were running the podcast. I was seeing clients. Every now and then, like a company would be like, hey, we need some help doing this since you don't work anymore. Can you help us out? And I was saying yes here and there. I was on the student, I was on the parent council at the kids' school. I was on the healthy council at the kids' school. I think we get it. Right. We were doing a lot. But by doing all of that, I was, my impact in one area was super, super small. It's like trying to be good at everything instead of being great at one or two things. Right. And if you think about a football team, your quarterback is not also the tight end, is not also... He might have the, a tight end, but he's not the tight end. <laughs> he probably does. <laughs> you know, you, you can't play all the positions. Where are you going to specialize in? You know, you, you you can have a major and a minor kind of thing, but right. you can't and, have all the things. So. And out of all that, it's a great opportunity to kind of reflect on that list and see what's not really doing it for you anymore. Right. What can you let go of? How many instruments are you playing? How many hobbies do you have? And how much time are you spending? So if you're looking for more time to make better food, if you're looking for more time to exercise more, if you're looking for more time to create more income because your family requires it, now you could kind of look at what can you let go of? Do you have to let go of it forever? No. But um, sometimes we're surprised by how many other small little things we do. And it all adds up. That don't. And that adds up, but it also doesn't impact your overall well-being. So it was really hard for me to, after eight years, to say, okay, I'm not doing parent council this year. Um, and now that school's back to normal-ish, not go out there and say, hey, will you take me back on the healthy schools committee? Um, those are things that I needed to walk away from because I needed more time in my business and with my family, not in that order. <laughs> Yeah. And then once you have all those lists and you've done that reflection, it's always good to keep those lists posted so that you can see them. Find a spot that you go to often, take a look at it so that you can make adjustments along the way. Yeah. So, you know, really saying, you know, maybe taking a different color highlighter and highlighting the things that you absolutely love, highlight the things that are absolutely necessary and highlight the things, don't cross them out, but highlight the things that you have to do that you really don't like to do and then cross out the things you don't have to do anymore and with those things that you have to do that you don't really like to do anymore perhaps you can create a plan to eliminate them down the line and look forward to the day where you don't have to do it anymore whether it's as simple as take out the trash or as more complicated as replace your complete full-time salary because you can't stand going to work anymore you know you you can do it but if you do some of the other things that you do love right? If you are taking care of your body, if you are eating healthier, if you do start that hobby that you've been wanting to do for the last 20 years, you might actually enjoy the more treacherous things that feel like must do's right now. You'll feel a lot better, I think, overall. And, you know, there's, there's, you don't have to do it all in one sitting. There's a lot of ways to do it. But these, this is a great outline to really help people change their quality of life without hiring someone to do it with them. So, 
If you want, go back and re-listen. Uh, find it on plantrainers.com slash 459. In the show notes, we'll have everything listed out. We'll also put in some links to some of our previous New Year podcasts in the show notes because we've had some other sessions like this where we've shared some great tips and tricks on ways to prepare yourself for the new year. Again, thanks for being with us on the Plant Trainers Podcast after eight years. And if you're new, welcome. Thanks for being here now. We have a lot more coming and it's going to continue to be a great show with, uh, we're going to, you know what, we're going to bring back some of our older episodes that Let's are no that. longer yeah. on iTunes to share that we've had some great conversations and great guests on the show. I think we should bring some of those back in this new year. I know when people reach out on Instagram, they go, wow, I listened to, I'm, I'm a new listener. I listened to your last three shows and I'm like, oh dude, what about the other 500? Yeah. There's so many good ones. Um, but they get, they get yeah. lost. After iTunes, a certain amount of time. Apple podcast doesn't really hold anything past 300. So our first 300 episodes are not available there anymore, unless you're going to plantrainers.com and searching for them. So I think we're going to use some of those older ones back on and, and we'll make some intros and put out some new, some new old ones basically. So our new listeners can hear them. And if you are looking for health change, big health changes in your life, if you are looking to maybe, you know, find more meaning, find more community, do something that fills your cup, that's creating income for your family and really bringing great greatness into the world, feel free to reach out to us at info at uh, We'll hop on the phone with you. We'll see if we can help you or if we can make any referrals to amazing people that we know. So feel free to stay connected at info at and you could find these show notes at planttrainers.com slash 459. Wow. Happy, 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 holidays. happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you all so much for listening to this edition of the Plant Trainers Podcast. We want to make sure that you subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, or any other podcasting platform. We really appreciate the feedback we receive from you. Every time we get a five-star rating or review on iTunes from one of our fans, it really helps other people find us just like you did. Thanks so much to our patrons. To become a patron, visit us at patreon.com slash plant trainers, even supporting us with one dollar really makes a difference in the quality of the show and don't forget to connect with us on instagram and twitter our handle is at plant trainers like plant trainers on facebook join our newsletter and check out our website at planttrainers.com for awesome recipes a list of our services and of course our latest podcast we encourage you to email your questions to info at planttrainers.com so that we can help you improve your quality of life through nutrition and fitness so we hope we've inspired you today join us again next time and, and have, have a, a healthy, healthy day. day. Or is that too corny? It's a little cheesy.